Okay, so in this video, I've finished all my flat colors. So I'm just showing you how to make them look to finalize your flat color. And you see how I have these little jagged whites around the pixels just from the, the lasso selections. We tried it with anti-alias turned on. We tried it with anti-alias turned off. And it just, um, even at high tolerances, it just left those. So how can I get my digital color to be a little bit more uh, filling of the space behind the black line art? And the way to do that was to make a duplicate of it. So Command J. Then to go to Filter and Gaussian Blur, which is the only filter I require that you know for this class, because it comes in really handy. And then we set the radius of that filter to only two pixels, because we don't want it to blur too much, otherwise it will go way outside our lines. So 0.2 doesn't do enough, but two pixels seems about right for this resolution. Say OK. And you can see a very slight blurring, right? What we want to do is we want to bolden that up. And so I'm going to duplicate at least 10 times that blur layer and then select them all and merge them together. I did this at the end of the last video as well. But now I can show you the effect that has. So without it, this is what our flat color looked like. And this is what it looks like behind the line art. With it, this is what our flat color looks like. And this is what it looks like behind the line art. You see how all those, those little gaps are now filled in. But it wasn't blurred and expanded so much that it goes outside of the width of our lines. It's another reason to have a 10 pixel line. So now this is truly useful line art. Okay, so what's next? I'm going to merge all the line art layer or all the color layers together. So we have just simple flat color. So there's a lot of merging layers and organizing things. And now the next step, like for some of you, flat color might be the end of the road. You really like it. You chose the colors well. It's done. The next step is duotone. So if we want to add light direction, we're going to take our local flat color and we're going to split it into light and darks. But first, I need to actually change my crazy colors to the colors I might actually want to use. Right. So what's nice about that is once you have a clean flat color layer, all you have to do is use your paint bucket. And I can just go to my swatches and pick a color and just drop it in my flat color layer. And it will immediately, you know, change it. So now, like, let me do kind of a, a greenish gray, drop that in there. For the teeth, let me brighten it up. Drop that in for a few of the teeth. Let me get a slightly, don't use white and black. Use variations on very dark colors, very light colors. And don't be afraid of color, but often the uh, the flat colors you end up using will be kind of less exciting than the really bold flatting colors you might have used. All right, let's see. Let's go warm again. Go darker. So this is still just flat color. 
but I'm actually replacing the crazy kind of flatting color with something that's more, more likely to be useful. And there can be a lot of trial and error. And just like when we were doing the sky, you could try painting with your, your um, ah, paint bucket tool at lower opacities. And so it will use a little bit of the, the crazy flat color you had behind. You see how I have a slight gradation from lighter to darker now? And that's pretty interesting, right? I try that on the blade. Make your, they're still flat colors, but you can kind of come upon, you're like almost mixing them a little bit. So a little bit more complex this way. There we go. But they're still all just one solid pixel flat color. So I'm using the paint bucket now at at 53%. But since I'm using kind of a complement color, it deadens it a little bit. Oh, too much. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just a little too much. So let's try it at 25%. Yeah, I like that. And then I can use the eyedropper and steal colors from myself if I want. Like if I wanted to have a gold tooth, it might be fun. Maybe that one shouldn't be the gold tooth. Maybe that one should be. All right. Steal some other colors for myself. Coloring is not good when it's complicated, necessarily. Being complicated doesn't make it good. It's good when it just feels kind of unified. So I like that, but I'm going to take the opacity down and blend those together. So I'll get kind of a purple. And then maybe I'll take the opacity down a little bit more each time. That's nice. So this is funny. This is giving me the illusion of gradated color while it's actually all perfectly flat. Everything's filled in with just one flat color. Okay. So I like those flat colors. Good time to save my work, which I haven't done in a while. Now I need to think about duotones. I've got the flats I want. I changed it from crazy flatting colors to the actual flat local colors I want. Now I have to think about this next step, 
which is splitting the local color into lights and darks. Now there are easier ways to do this and harder ways to do this. You can experiment, but here's a really easy way. Just duplicate your flat color layer and rename it to duotone color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say image adjustment levels. I'm going to take the midtones and I'm going to make a shadow value of all of these by pushing my midtones darker. Instant shadow. And then if I want cut edge or hard edge duotone, I'm going to get that by drawing with my lasso and deleting from different parts. So where do I know I want to highlight? Well, I know I want to highlight on this side of the, the blade. So I'm going to lasso that in my duotone color layer and delete it. I know I want to highlight on the outer rim of the skull here. And because I'm just using the lasso with no feathering and deleting, this is going to be cut edge. And I might want to highlight on this ridge of the skull. I'm going pretty fast. Maybe I want a little bit of a highlight on this part of the skull, on the cheekbone, catching it, catching the light. And on the bridge of the nose. Now, the more experience you have drawing and observing light, the better choices you will make with the shapes of your highlights. But notice that this is duotone coloring. It's splitting that one local color into a light value and a dark value. And if anything, it's a little bit on the dark side because I'm just using the flat, the flat color as the default, right? As the, as the highlight color. But I can always change that too. So this is just doing duotone by adding a dark shadow. And then of course this pommel has to be shiny on its edge. And what I love about it is you can just take a whole area, like say I want to highlight here, and it will delete from all the different areas at once. That's the beauty of setting up your flats correctly. Cut out a little bit of duotone here, a little bit in the eye socket, some reflected light getting in there, a little bit on the gold tooth. Maybe little spots on the other teeth and hold down shift and do multiples. I don't have to worry about its effect on my other layers. Right. So you can see the duotone. And then this might be my finished result. You know, it depends on the job. But I want to show you some of the other, other effects, other things I want you to know about digital coloring, even though you don't have to use them for your own project. So this is duotone, hard-edged, or cut-edge coloring. And I start with this because it's really uh, easy to soften the edges, but it's hard to 
uh, harden soft edges. So you start 